Welcome to today's Novage webinar that will uh, show you how to master jewelry with advanced 3D CAD solutions. Uh, join us for an insightful exploration of, into 3D design, the premier CAD jewelry design software with over two decades at the forefront of the industry. And today we will delve into how 3D designs has transformed both design and manufacturing processes. This webinar will highlight the software's robust features and user-friendly interface, establishing its role as the go-to choice for jewelers globally and in crafting exquisite 3D jewelry pieces. I'm so excited, you have no idea. Today's webinar presenter, David Swallow, is an expert 3D design trainer and his profound knowledge in CAD and jewelry design has established him as a national authority on 3D design, skillfully guiding and educating users for about a long time now, I think. Uh, he'll tell us all about it shortly. What I want to point out is the page where you can find 3D Design uh, Pro and all the other 3D design products on our catalog. Just visit Novage.com. Novage is changing the way designers purchase 3D software, offering more choices, more freedom, best advice, and faster service. Check us out at Novage.com. And now I will um, switch the screen and um, give complete uh, stage uh, to Dave. Hi, yes, thank you. Um, thanks for that introduction. Um, let's, uh, yeah, get this going, uh, show my screen. We see your screen now, David, take it away. Perfect. All right, so welcome everyone. Um, this is uh, Mastering Jewelry with Advanced 3D CAD Solutions. That would be uh, our presentation on 3 design and our our debut here with Novage. So we're excited to have a new platform to, to show off our product and sell our product. So. I have a, a presentation for you today showing the advantages of 3Design. And uh, just uh, real quick uh, about myself. I am a application engineer, application specialist with 3Design. Uh, uh, so basically an expert with the software. I teach uh, our customers the software doing online training and in-person classes. I also... Um, do all the training materials for uh for three design for the u.s market and, and also around the world um i've done over 100 videos uh been with the company for going on 12 years now but i've been using the software for over 20 uh working with third parties doing training and support and so uh first to dive into the software um we're going to talk about the uh, core philosophy of features um, of the of the program and with that um uh 3design was was developed with jewelers in mind it's a jewelry cad program from the beginning uh they collaborated worked with jewelers asking what they wanted uh when developing the software so we wanted to make sure it had as, as many jewelry features as possible uh, it's not a, a plugin built on other platforms it's a from the ground up built built for jewelers uh, a little bit about the user interface compatibility, et cetera. Um, I'm going to pop up the program here for you. Uh, just so you see, the uh, this is a 3Design. Uh, this one right here is uh, version 11. It's the current version right now. And uh, you can see that it's very ergonomic, very easy uh, interface. Uh, lots of bright colors and icons and uh, you don't see any command consoles or anything like that. Uh, everything is done through just point and click and work around the software. It's very easy to navigate, uh, move things around. We also uh, work with a 3D mouse, so you can do some really nice transitions and zooms and get the part where you want it. Um, the, the biggest uh, difference with our software, most of the other software, is our parametric history tree. Uh, this is fully parametric software, uh, and you can see the tree over here in the corner. Um, all of our interfaces is customizable, so you can move around all your toolbars and palettes and things and get it organized the way you like. 
Uh, but here's the history tree, and you can see uh, it's keeping track of everything I do, kind of like recording um, your steps. And as you build, you build a parametric history between your objects. So your ring size is, is very important. So as you, you're building um, and you change the ring size, you want the rest of the components to update with it. So as you're building, you kind of build those things. It records into this history tree so you can see all the steps created to make things. Um, so um, I would say that's our number one you know, difference and what makes our software stand out is that, that history. Um, compatibility, we, um, we are compatible with uh, both PC and Mac, so it, um, it works on either one, and you don't need a separate license for either one. You just buy one license, and you're, you can uh, use that on any, any uh, PC or Mac uh, that is compatible, of course. Um, and you can check out compatibility uh, in the support section on 3design.com there. So, well, that was a little bit of 3 Design V11, um, but today I have something exciting for you. You guys get to see for the first time 3 Design V12. So V12 is releasing very soon in the next few weeks. And yeah, I'm very excited to show this off for the first time. Uh, so let's, let's just jump into that and then get to see more of the software and what makes us stand out. So uh, the biggest things you're going to see um, in the new version is our new real-time rendering technology uh, right in the viewport as you're building. You get these beautiful designs, uh, beautiful colors, realistic metals, all that fun stuff. So uh, let's let's jump over to the interface and see how that looks. Close this one. All right, so uh, this is the, um, the home screen of 3Design. This is when you start up the program. You have some some buttons and some shortcuts to some previous documents. And I'm just going to open up the same one from that image. And as you can see, here's our real-time rendering. It's all live rendering right here in the program. Uh, great reflections, great colors. So. Um, big improvement there and we can see um very clearly the objects selected we have a nice little uh framing around each object um and for those of you who want something uh, a little less flashy when you're designing uh it's really easy to switch um go over here to view and we can toggle simplified rendering so it's still colorful, but you got your, um, you know, less reflections and lighting and things like that. Uh, so less flashy. So if you want to design that way, again, we like to, you know, give the users a choice of how they like to design. Um, some some other things with the interface that are new uh, is a new right click menu. Uh, so this pops up a uh, little radial men menu, so you can quickly go through the uh, the different right-click uh, options, as well as there's a quick button for toggling that simplified rendering as well. So you quickly go back and forth. All right, so let's talk about uh, empowering your creativity and productivity. Uh, so again, to show off some of the new features, and I'm going to show you some actual building of a ring uh, towards the end of this presentation. So don't worry, you get to still see all the core features and things. So what uh, what makes three design three design? Uh, but just real quickly to go through some of these new new uh, new items for you, we're very excited to show them off. Uh, so we have a new advanced screenshot and animation features. So with the new uh, real-time rendering in the interface, you can uh, take quick screenshots, get your you know, beautiful images without having to spend time rendering it out. If you want to just take uh, quick screenshots and a uh, built-in animation feature. So you can quickly uh, create a nice little video uh, of the ring rotating, things like that. And that's all done just quickly through the view menu. And we do a screenshot 
to clipboard so it saves the memory or you can do a screenshot to file so go right into a file so you can quickly email that uh, post it online um, whatever you want to do with that and then the create animation again very simple interface uh, we choose the duration uh, the quality so frames per second and there's a preview option so you can see that rotating around et cetera, et cetera. Um, so you can play around with the resolution uh, and then what kind of rotation you want to do, you know, some custom around custom axes and things like that. Okay, um, also I want to talk about the, um, the new material and image library. So with that um, new, new rendering technology we have. Uh, of course, that's going to be new materials. So we've been hard at work at creating hundreds and hundreds of new materials, replacing all the old materials. Um, so we get these nice shiny effects. Um, and a new image library. So uh, keeps track of your images, your screenshots that you create through that new uh, advanced screenshot uh, uh, feature. Uh, real quick, I want to talk about uh, core enhancements in 3Design and 3Shaper. So 3Shaper is our uh, our add-on for 3Design. It is for subdivision modeling, so uh, more organic modeling. Uh, you've probably seen some other other programs that are similar. And um, uh, basically, we've fixed and well, not really fixed, but we've enhanced and and adjusted hundreds of features uh starting with v11 we have new boolean operation uh algorithms we have a uh, better sdl output uh things like that and then again a long list of just many 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 uh updates and features for just the core you know engine and we'll see some of those as we're as we're building my ring So, um, so again, that does include uh, better uh, precision, better efficiency, uh, ease of use improvements for the program overall. Uh, so, uh, some of the things that have been been adjusted are uh, a reorganizable uh, history tree. So, I want to talk about that. That's a very exciting one for our customers previous customers and it's going to make things easier for everybody so before if you um were using through design you know it kind of keeps this history tree going in, a, in the order that you create things uh well very simply now you can just simply drag and drop and move things around it's a simple thing but um it's a huge improvement to the program it's going to make uh keeping your keeping track of your history and and how that parametric history flow works uh, so I definitely wanted to point that one out. Uh, the enhancements with uh, curves and uh, scalability of the program, so you can scale the size of your curves and the, uh, they're much clearer to see, things like that. Uh, so, um, so yeah, so the, the developers, we have a... a a growing development team, uh, lots of fresh faces, and they've gone through and just kind of went through every line of code and cleaned things up. We start, uh, this program starts up in about you know, six seconds. It's very fast. Uh, so improvements like that uh, have been, you know, gone over with a fine tooth comb and, and it's running way more efficient uh, than ever before. So. Okay. And then, uh, so talking about V12 and the new system, um, we'll talk about uh, how it's a future-proof investment. So, oops, I'm, my slides are out of order. <laughs> well, we'll leave that on there. <laughs> so, 3Design uh, uh, V12 has been rewritten with uh, new Java, uh, new Java 17. Uh, so we are in the latest version of Java, and so for PC users, um, we're going to be uh, 
you know, compatible for your you know computer purchases for the next few years, uh, many years to come. And for our Apple users who are going to be very excited, we'll know that it's now natively written in code for Apple. So um, any compatibility issues we may have had in the, uh, in the past few years with Apple changing to the new chips and uh, different proprietary uh, languages and things like that, we've updated everything to work with that. So we are back to fully compatible with Apple uh, using native code. So very excited about that. Uh, it's a big, big thing for 3Design to have our Apple users. We've got a good 30% uh, uh, user base of Apple users out there. So much larger than the normal market share. All right, so with that, uh, let's jump into my actual you know, demo in software. Uh, I'll show you a parametric design. I'm just gonna start building something from the ground up for you. Uh, nothing, you know, uh, it's a demo I've done many times, but nothing really planned and prepared. Uh, just to show you just how easy it is to jump in and start start designing. Let's go back to a new file. All right, so again, from the home screen, I'm just going to jump into my project, and it's as easy as that. Just hit the little plus button there, and it's ready to go. I'm already in the interface. So. Just some of my windows a little bit here. All right, so when I'm designing a ring for your customer, the first thing you're going to want to do is, you know, come up with a few things that you know off the top of your, uh, um, you know, off the top of the design, and that's the ring size, uh, the st size of the stone. If you're going to do like the center stone, I'm going to be doing a simple solitaire design here today. So uh, just jump right in and start with the ring size. So ring size builder. Move my little palette over here so you can see a little better. So this is our ring size builder, and it's kind of the core of our you know history tree here. Going, um, we want to build everything off of this ring size builder. That way, later if I do want a different size ring, I don't have to start from the beginning or roll back to different versions of the file. I'm just go through the history tree and make some changes. So I'm just going to choose a US size uh, nine nine and a half, and talk about this little plane on top here. Um, that's our first history link we got um, where we're gonna build our stone right there on top of our ring and that's gonna stay in the same position. So we'll do that next. So I'll just go ahead and validate that and jump over to uh, building a stone. And because I pre-selected that ring size builder, that's as easy it is to make those history, some of those history uh, associations. So it knows that it's going to place it in that plane and it's going to always be in that, that plane there. So. Okay, so taking a look at our new library of materials, we've got tons of uh, stones and precious stones. So we can choose our, our favorite and choose the size of our stone. So a nice one carat here. Okay. And as I get a bigger stone here, I didn't leave myself much room for that space between where the stone sits and then the, the inside of the ring finger there. So I'm going to go ahead and validate that. And I don't have to, again, roll back and undo. I just go back into our ring size builder by double clicking it. And I'll just adjust the top plane a little bit, uh, 3.7. Okay, so now I know where the girdle of my stone is going to be. It's exactly that measurement we put in there. Whenever I make a change to history, all I have to do is reload the history tree with this simple button over here. You can set that as a shortcut as well. And there we have our uh, stone is at that position we wanted. Okay, so next up, let's uh, let's work on the shank. Um, so I'm gonna use a simple builder for this, just to show you again how easy it is. You can get very complex with your designs. It is a full you know, engineering style program underneath. So you can uh, get really complex with it, or we can just simply use some builders and, and build our rings. Um, so I'm gonna start with a, a sweeping wizard. Oh, sorry, I'm gonna do the rail builder instead. Let's do a three rail builder. It's a little more complex. Uh, so. So this is going to build all the rails for me. I don't have to go into sketch mode. We can look at sketch mode a little bit, but uh, everything is uh, already built into this tool. So all the curves are drawn and we can adjust those curves using sliders. We can type in exact measurements. We can adjust the angles using these little nice little handles right there in the interface. 
Uh, so it's fully uh, customizable inside this wizard. So all right, right now I'm just dealing with everything in this page here, which is the front view. So a little shortcut here will flip the view for me. So I don't have to navigate to it. Uh, we can plug in custom curves, of course. So if I do want to draw my own shapes for the outside of the ring, we can do that. Over here, we'll go to the uh, second page here and look at the options for the side view. And that's basically some offsets, some, some widths of our ring, so thickness. And again, I'm just going to do it visually with some nice little sliders, little handles. And then finally, I want to go ahead and uh, sweep this. So sweeping, for those of you new to this, um, is basically taking a shape and filling it in between those paths or those um, those uh, skeleton curves that we were, we were building here. So I'm going to go ahead and add a section in here. And again, I could go in and draw my own in sketch mode and take those curves and just using the hand, grab them, and it automatically fills them in. Or I can go right into our library. So our library uh, comes with the program, and there's, there's plenty of things in here um, from uh, different shapes and parts and findings and all kinds of things in there. Um, but if we go in here to 2D symbols, we can go right into shanks. And again, with jewelry, you're going to do a lot of the same shanks over and over and over again. So instead of having to draw them each time, you just grab one. Uh, you can also um, save your own items into the uh, library so you, you can find those easily again as well. So for those designs that you repeat, okay, let's double click that, plug that in there and we can preview it. And we see there's our design there and I'm happy with that. So I'm gonna go ahead and validate that. Okay, a nice rose gold on that one. Okay, so now let's um, take a look at uh, the center stone and how to set that. I think I'm gonna go with, uh, again, for time's sake today. That's my reminder, this is a beta version. So if you guys are getting a really fresh look at this. Um, so simple bezel in, uh, instead of a nice fancy setting for now. Um, the nice thing is parametric design. So if I want a different setting uh, later on, I can just simply swap that out um, using the same parameters and quickly get a new setting for it. Uh, but we'll go with the bezel and let's go to the front view here. This is our compass down here in the corner. So it makes uh, navigating really easy when you want to get to these flat views. You'll notice that um, by default, I'm working in a single viewport. A lot of uh, times you start learning in a four view layout um, and that's completely fine. Sometimes it has an advantage when you're working, um, maybe drawing curves on the side of your object, things like that, or working in three dimensional curves helps to see the objects from different sides, but um, <clears throat> um, we have a, <clears throat> excuse me, a switch for that. So you can go into that four viewport mode, but um, by default, we just use our compass and these nice little simple, simple views, uh, single views. And I'm gonna go ahead and freeze my ring here. So getting used to this new menu, there we go, freeze. And we can see uh, through that other shank area. So you can see the uh, actual bezel. And I'm just going to quickly go through and reshape this. So it's already um, linked to the stone. If you had noticed, I do it really quickly, but I selected the stone and then launched the tool. When you do that, it just plugs that in for you. So that history link again is automatically created for you. So you can, you know, not have to worry about it too much. Um, a lot of a lot of the history is really simple like that. So um, I'm going to stick to the existing stone for that shape of it and the size of it. And then I'm just going to go in and use again my little sliders and handles to to create this. All right, make sure it has enough width for that particular stone. I'm happy with the height. And I want to maybe cheat a little bit and round it off. So I'll go into this last tab and we'll do a round top from there. With that, I'll go back and bring the height down some. So Maybe I'm doing this just for a virtual catalog. So that's the nice thing about moving to you know, CAD is uh, you don't have to have full inventory for all your items anymore. If you want to try out a design, you just throw it, you know, throw it on your website, your social media, and let's, you know, have it ordered then. So we'll we'll do a nice uh, 
finished piece instead of uh, going for production piece. But you know, something to think about when you're designing is whether you're doing for production or just for images. And I'm happy with that. We'll go ahead and validate here. We'll keep it in the same pink gold. Okay. So now we want this to match our finger size. I purposely brought that down into the ring finger a little bit here so that when um, when we change rig size later, it'll also, it's gonna be in the same height, but we want the inside of it to match up to the inside of our finger. So what if we just quick, quick, a simple crop and punch or trim the finger size. So let's move over here. And basically it's going to trim it. We can offset it a little bit. So if we want a little bit of variation between the two parts, I think I will do a 0 0.01 offset in there. And so let's go ahead and validate that. And you'll see it's going to quickly do what we call a Boolean operation. Again, not to get too technical, but that's when you're adding or subtracting parts from each other uh, or intersecting them together. And we get our bezel is finished. So quickly and easily is that. So let me bring back my ring here. And we have these nice icons so you can see what's frozen, what's hidden, et cetera. And there we go. So we have one more little little part to take out of there. Right now, my shank is a full shank, and we've got this nice little bezel here. So I want to remove some of that as well. Um, let's see, can I offset the inside? Yeah, let me go negative here. Negative point, pull five. So just a tiny amount. I want that to stick through like so. There we go. Okay. And then I'll just show you a quick Boolean operation. We want to subtract this shape so that we have that cavity there that we can put these parts together. And you can leave these parts separate when you print them out and cast them. So if you want to make polishing easier, things like that. Or you can add them all together in, in the last step and print it all as one full ring for your production. Depends on your the style you want to do that. Uh, so select the ring and my bezel here and just do a Boolean. Which is going to be in the solids here. And we'll do a Boolean and subtract. Simple as that. As long as you got them in the right order and you select them, uh, you don't have to think about it too much. Um, we'll just let that calculate and it goes very quickly. And we see we just subtracted that bezel, so that creates the cavity. Uh, where the bezel is going to fit in there. And I didn't have to copy and paste it first. Uh, I'm just going to go ahead and just do it. And we'll see with this history tree, I can recover that original bezel really easily. Uh, before I do that, though, that hole in the middle is still there. So I'm just going to do a quick uh, procedure here where we have to extract that. And then, and then I could just filter out that excess piece there. All right. Now, to bring back our part, there's uh, several ways to find it. Uh, we could go into the history tree here, or we can go look through the history by just doing our quick right click. And we're looking for the created on linked items. Uh, created on, there is our extraction, there's our Boolean, and oh, this window needs to be increased a little bit. Okay, let me do it the old fashioned way here. Still working on that. All right, it says. All right, here's my filter. Here's that extraction. There's the Boolean I did, and there's the uh, parts. So the trim to finger is the, uh, the bezel that I had there. I'm just going to clone that real quick. So you can reuse parts from the history, even though um, we've taken them away, they're still there. Um, they're still part of the history. So everything's still there. You don't have to, like I said, worry too much about thinking ahead and copying and pasting things. And you know, you might want to use parts multiple times over and over, so things like that. So we'll just bring that back. And of course, it's going to be in the perfect position to go along with that uh, cutout we made. All right, so let's uh, let's make this a little fancier. Before I get, jump into that, though, um, if we were just to have a simple solitaire like this with a bezel set, and we wanted to produce it as is, good to go. Like I said, we could boolean these two parts together, add these two parts together, or 
um, add some more detail to it so we can you know make it a little fancier. So what I'm going to do is first of all just uh, save my file. I haven't done that yet. And there's a little warning. I'm using a beta version. So. All right. And then I'm going to test out my, my history here. So I've built everything parametrically so far. Um, I've kept everything linked together by just kind of thinking about what to highlight when I start each tool. And oh, I clicked on the edge of the screen there. <laughs> Uh, we'll uh, go ahead and test out and make sure things are working. So there's a lot we can change in this ring already, um, and it should be all fully parametric. So uh, in my history tree here, I have my ring size builder uh, where we started. So I'm going to jump back to that step and just quickly change the finger size. Let's say we want a size 11 in this ring. So after we validate here, that ring is going to turn red. That just lets us know that we've made changes that affect different parts of the ring. And in this case, it's all affected by it because we've linked everything to that finger size. So we'll just reload. And as quickly as that, there's your size 11. <coughs> Excuse me. Okay, so that's working fine. Um, what about our stone? Maybe they want a different stone. You know, customers can be finicky sometimes. They come in and they want to change their stone. Or maybe you want to change the stone. Um, you want to do a production line of this this ring, but you want to be able to offer different different versions of the ring. So we can save out this one and then just make changes to it and have a whole line of, of, of these rings. So back in the history tree, I'll just go back to the stone and let's say we want to do a nice oval and we'll set up the size let's say five by eight and maybe a different color. Let's go with a amethyst. Okay, and we simply validate that and reload. And you see the bezel is exactly the same parameters that I set when I originally set up the bezel. It's just changing the shape and the size for you. Okay, and it's also doing all of the other steps that was linked to that. That was the Boolean cut where we cut the piece out, the extraction, all of that is uh, recomputed. All right, and then let's go and do, let's say we want to maybe do something a little more custom with the shape of the ring. So instead of this half round that I started with, I'm going to go into sketch mode. I'm going to select a plane here, sketch mode, and lots of uh, sketching tools so you can draw the shapes and things you want. Um, here's another new feature in um, B12. Uh, we see our little zoom menu down here in the lower left corner. So you quickly get a, a nice extra zoom level without having to always zoom in and out um, so you can comfortably draw next to the ring over here and still get that detail at the same time. It's another um, another innovative way we're thinking about uh, not having to you know always work with the different viewports, switching viewports and keeping your eye on different viewports. So, uh, let's go into a symmetrical curve here and let's say I just want to do something a little more designed like that. And because um, we're using that rail builder, it's going to know the size of this section based on how we set up those rails. So I don't have to worry about uh, sizing this. So I'm just going to quickly rough it out there and then we'll plug that in by going back through the history tree. <clears throat> so uh, ring rail builder is still here at the top of the tree. So just select that. And so instead of using the library this time, I'm just going to take this hand here and grab that curve, and it's going to plug that in for me. Again, just revalidate that, recompute, and there's our new shape, and just like that. Okay, so I'm going to do a regular old undo and go back to the, that shape because in the next step, I want to add some detail to this ring. So I'm going to uh, show you how we can put some stones on the side of this. And what else do we need to test? Um, oh yeah, we can go back into the rail uh, rail builder itself and just resize things like the side view. So after you get it built and we've got a different style or different shape uh, top on there, it may not match up the way we want it anymore. So, or um, you're just not you know, happy with 
the thicknesses, things like that, or you know, we want to make the ring a little less uh, expensive because you know, gold prices go up or something like that. Uh, simply come back here and make those changes. Uh, same thing for the front view. Um, maybe we want a little bit different shape with this version. A little boat shanker. And we can preview that to see, see the differences. Um, I think I'm happy with that. We'll go ahead and validate that and reload again. So some quick changes. And again, you build one of these rings and you can have thousands of rings from the same exact file. Um, quick way to, to start building up inventory, get that return on investment. Uh, so yeah, let's go ahead and add our channel here. Okay, first thing I'm gonna need is a path for that. So I'm gonna just quickly get a curve. We could draw the curve. Uh, different ways you can get to the same result, but I'm going to quickly just get that from the ring itself. There we go. Now I've got a parametric path. Since I use that tool, it's already linked to this, this uh, surface. So if I change my ring size later, my channel is going to change as well. So jump in here and select the curve and go right into channel and I think I'm happy with the curve. I think I need a little bit of a margin at the beginning now. Move those down easily. And we'll choose our size of stones. Let me freeze this. All right, I think I'll do a nice increment here so the stones get smaller as they go down. And we'll start with that size. All right, happy with that, keep it simple. And we're gonna go ahead and make a channel for it as well. So this has the channel cutter built into it. So we're gonna use this just to lay out the stones as well as uh, create our channel. So I'm just gonna make a few adjustments here and then we'll go ahead and see how this looks. Bring that up a little. Right, maybe we'll put some prongs, we have some time here today. So we'll put some prongs in there. So I'm gonna make these a little bit wider. Get right up here on it, there we go. There we go. We'll do like a shared prong down inside that channel. And so just like that, so we've got our stones positions as well as the channel cutter to cut that out of that ring. So I'm gonna need one of those for the other side. So let me just mirror that real quick. I've got some shortcuts. Do I have my mirror on here? Nope. Uh, really easy to create your shortcuts. I wanna reuse this mirror over and over. So I'm just gonna pop that up there just by drag and drop. Now I can quickly get to that shortcut by mirroring it over. There we go. And then I'm just going to find my ring and another quick subtraction. There we go. All right, so our channel is built. And we wanna put some stones in there. So again, it's a separate step, um, but it gives you more <clears throat> flexibility there instead of having to decide up front which stones are gonna go in there. Is build the channel and then we can always make changes back and forth between them. So uh, we're just gonna build a stone and I'm gonna stick with some rounds. Let's see what looks good with this purple color here. And let's do some garnets. And now we don't have to worry about the size of this because we've already established that when we created the channel. So I'm just gonna throw this in there and we'll just select from our history, there's the channel. And there's the stone, and setting is as easy as that. I'll switch over to simplified rendering here for a second for you so you can see a little clearer while I'm designing. There we go. And 
we need those stones on the other side. So there's my shortcut I just created. We'll quickly, quickly get to that. Okay, and I need to make some adjustments. I said I wanted to do some prongs in there and I did get a little extra width so I can fit my shared prongs down in here, but I forgot to leave some room at the ends of those. So again, beauty of parametric history. We just go back and make those changes. So back into the channel and we're going to do distance to wall. Here we go. So we'll just extend the wall there at the ends out a little bit and make that change. Okay. All right, let's put our prongs in there. I'm going to create a prong. Yeah. You can just draw that right there in the viewport. So a lot of our simple solid figures and things like that, again, you don't have to you know, worry about sketching anything. Just quickly draw them out there. And make this the right size though. Uh, let's see, that size, we're gonna probably need about point. And bring the height down a little bit. Oop. Let's recenter reset that real quick. There we go. And grab the right handle. Bring that height down a little. And again, I'm not planning any of this out. I'm just going to throw it in there and see how it looks. And if it's too tall, we just make that change. All right. So let's select this and my channel again. And we'll do what we call channel prongs. So anytime you have a, a row of stones, it doesn't have to be in the channel. It could be just a, a line of stones on any design. And, but this is a simple way of automatically getting that shared prong setting. And I see I need to bring the heights down a little bit. I can do that. Let's do that in the original prong. So see here they're floating because they're based on the stone girdle. So again, it makes it really easy to change though. We just go back into our channel prongs and now I can take that blue arrow and, <clears throat> excuse me, using that, uh, the simple uh, handles, bring this down. Okay. Let's see that change. There we go. That's a good, again, I just, Need to since it's a symmetrical ring. The other side, we just do a quick mirror. Okay. Now, real quick, quick uh, I want to show you if we wanted to do this exact same ring, and maybe we want we don't want the channel stones on the side, but we want to reuse this uh, this ring. And maybe do some pave or something on the side. Something, something um, different. So instead of undoing this, I'm going to go ahead and clone from the history. So find my boolean. Uh, All right, so we'll take that filter and we'll just right click and create a copy. I got the wrong one. Yep. Yeah. Go further back in the history there. There we go. Uh, let's see. Filaments. It should be that one. Let me just do a clone. That's a little easier for me on the spot. There we go. Oh, I think I had it right the first time. I was looking at the two pieces together. I need to hide the old one. There we go. And we can hide these channel prongs and hide the... This is there. Yeah, that should be it. Okay. Oh, and we can hide the uh, stones as well. So we'll quickly hide all these. Okay, so now we've got um, back to the ring being just a solid solid piece. So again, same file, a quick save, it's been a while. And we could do uh, something different on the side here. So let's look at a Pave real quick. So this is our advanced Pave tool. Um, it's, 
it's been improved and changed and updated over the years. So we've got tons of options in this one tool of doing all kinds of Pave layouts. Pave layouts can be the, some of the most complicated things you work on. Uh, so uh, we want to simplify that and make it as easy as possible. So I'm going to show you just quick, um, so a few minutes left here today. So quick um, auto Pave. So select in our surface and just jump right over to auto pave and let's see increase the size a little bit let's let's stick with a hexagon pattern and yeah i'm happy with that we'll go ahead and see what that looks like so we go ahead and pave it uh need a don't have enough room for all those stones so let's uh let's just go down in size a little bit Some pretty large stones anyway. Oops. And I'm just rolling my mouse wheel to make those changes. Anytime you have numbers in these, these little fields, uh, really simple to resize things. Oh, let me clear this one and try again. There we go. I'm happier with that. Uh, we might have to make some adjustments down here, but for the demo's sake, let me just go ahead and build this in here. So uh, another quick shortcut, instead of having to create all of our stones and then filling them in later, we've got a built in little add to history button. So it's going to add the stones in the history as well. All right. And of course, I could just mirror those to the other side. And we just need some holes for those to sit in. So some cutters to create the uh, drill holes. And let's select all those at once and jump over here to multi-cutter. So this covers you for a lot of different stones and sizes and shapes. It's, it does them all at once. And we'll just make a few adjustments real quick. There we go. All right. Let me uh, move over to a stone that's over on the corner for you. So quickly just move the tool over here and easier to see. There we go. So I just want to adjust the seat, I think. Just widen that up a little bit. And that's going to automatically change the size of the drill hole for me. So we just want our stones to fit down in there. Okay, and then to make it a little more interesting, uh, let's say we don't want to do traditional drill holes because we could do that by hand. We want to do something a little, little more difficult. So we'll let the, the CAD and the, um, the machines do the, do the work for us. So let's do some... Let's get a library shape here. Do something fun with it. So, uh, let's go with these little, these little shapes here. Okay, so you can really customize these. And so you get a kind of automatic azure for the backside of your ring. All righty. I probably did a little too fancy for it. There you go. <laughs> Takes a little time to calculate. But yeah, I did it. That's a lot of them. I'm a little worried about this being too many here. So before I cut these out, I want to get rid of some of that mess at the end. So again, beautiful, beautiful history tree here. So we jump into our pave. From earlier and I'm just going to remove some of these stones out of here and 
that can be a little tedious. Um, I won't go too far with it. There's better ways to do that. Recalculate the auto pave and things like that, which I might do here. Let's do. Yeah, I would stick with that. And reload. Hopefully, yeah, with corner here. Uh, but again, that's the beauty of parametric design. Like I said, I didn't sit down with a pencil and paper ahead of time and plan any of this out. So just, just start designing. Um, so it definitely um, releases your creativity and allows you to, to do that kind of designing. Now, of course, you could do it the uh, traditional way. Um, sit, you know, sit down and draw it out. Uh, you can bring in your images and use that for reference. Uh, we have a nice uh, uh, four view builder that'll you know help you build a from your sketches, things like that. But I think uh, with one, I'm not going to try to bully in these. We'll keep that like that. And let's bring that back here. And from there, I think we're going to leave it open for a few questions. Yes, uh, thank you so much, David. If you have any question, this is the best time to talk to, you know, the expert. I uh, thank you, Dave, for a wonderful presentation. Um, I we're so excited to have you on board, and um, we can't wait to provide everybody with 3D designer or 3 shaper. We're very excited. Um, what a great product. I think uh, I was impressed by the interface. And personally, you know, anything real time rendering, um, it's, you know, the way to go. So this is your time to speak while we wait for a question. I'm going to show again um, my screen so everybody can see where they can um, purchase 3D Design Pro or take a look at, you know, uh, the, the specification. And you can always give us a call anytime and talk to our expert. They will definitely help you, you know, in your purchase and um, see if there's uh, any complementary software you might need, not with 3 Design Pro because um, it's a standalone product. It's not a plugin. Let's repeat again. And uh, you just need to get that and it does everything you need um, to design your jewel. So um, let's see if we have questions. There are still no questions. So I think you've been, um, uh, you know, very, uh, the, the demo was self-explanatory. If you have questions, Feel free to contact us. We'll put in in, uh, in contact with Dave if necessary. Otherwise, I'm gonna leave it at this and remind everybody to visit Novage, Novage.com. Novage is changing the way designers purchase 3D software, offering all the choices and the freedom to mix and match different product. And we have our expert on the line and on the phone anytime. And uh, we're we're just really uh, great at providing um, excellent customer service. So um, check us out and um, hope you share this uh, webinar recording with friends and colleagues and it will be placed on YouTube as soon as later today. Uh, thanks again, David. That, that was wonderful. I hope this is the first of, of a series of webinars together. Yes, um, yes. Thank you. Yeah, thank that was you. awesome. Have yeah, thank you. We're, we're also very excited to work, work with you guys and, um, you know, see our product on a, on, a, on a new platform and we'll be, you know, working with your experts to make sure they have all the knowledge they need to, to help your customers. So we're, we, we all have the same philosophy there. Wonderful. Uh, thanks again and have a great rest of the day, everybody. Bye bye.